Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Join me walking up the hill. Uh, today's video, I don't really do these review kind of things very often, but this is a review on my Nordisk Telemark 1 lightweight long names, aren't they? Uh, tent, because I get a lot of questions about this. Um, oh, the boy's gone over that style. Not supposed to go over styles because he's hurt his back, but he's too quick for me. Um, yeah, I've written about this tent before. I get a lot of questions on it because uh, it's a tent I used a lot for ML courses and stuff uh, last year. I thought it was worth doing a little vlog about it because I've written about it. Videos are loads better, aren't they? Um, so we'll, we'll go and have a chat about it. I'll put it up, talk about the good points, the bad points, all that. Uh, the general gist is it's a super lightweight tent and it's kind of really good, but anything super lightweight is also flawed as well. So um, yeah, let me go up and put it up and then we'll have a little chat about it. There you go folks, pretty easy tent to put up, it only takes a couple of minutes which is great you know, but it is easy, single pole through the middle uh, gives you this kind of side entrance and I, I really like this design for sort of small single person tents, this kind of style, it works really well I think. Once you put the pole in you just peg out either end, two pegs at either end and that gets it into the sort of standing state and sorry I'm being stared at by a sheep, that's really off-putting. Um, the key to these little tents is to get the uh, pegging out dialed so you can get a nice tight fly sheet and everything uh, so you kind of have to hoof this around and stuff and get it in the right place and get it all nice and squared off then it sits nicely and you get uh, a sort of minimal flapping tent basically and it's going to be nice and stable not have the inner touch in the outer to let uh, you know rain seep through and everything. So with four pegs you can actually have it standing what I do is um, it comes with these tags and this is really flipping annoying that they don't give you the guy lines uh, with it. I guess that's to keep the weight down and save a fraction of money, isn't it? But yeah, put these in. So a couple of extra pegs gives it loads more stability and makes it pitch tighter as well. And then you've got a couple of tags, one on either side for this. I don't often bother with these ones actually. So you can pitch it with four, but actually I carry uh, eight pegs for it. And uh, that gives you plenty then. I really like this tent, there's, there's some really good points to it, but I'll have a discuss uh, about it um, and there's plenty of points I don't like about it as well, like one in particular. The main thing I do like about it is to show you the bags, not the name because it's long, Nordis Telemark Lightweight One Person Tent, but it's this number here and I've shown this tent before on videos, but it's uh, 830 grams as it says there. That's flipping great isn't it? 830 grams less than a kilo for your whole tent now by the time you've added the guy lines and two extra pegs for that I weighed it this morning it comes in at 960 grams I don't know if those actually weigh 130 grams together I kind of feel like they might not do so I don't know if that figure is accurate or not but it is a lightweight tent it is sub one kilo and that's really good price wise I think this retails, uh, you know, I'm not sure what the actual retail price is, but I had a search on the internet this morning and actually you can pick them up for about 360, 370. That's kind of okay. I'll discuss some other tents as we go along. Um, but that's not too bad a price. Let's just switch to the old GoPro and we'll have a little uh, look through some of the features. I don't know if you can see the boy in the big camera, he's enjoying the sun there. So um, yeah, it pegs out there and there, that's hardly uh, exciting is it really? None, none of this is that exciting about how to peg out a tent is it? Um, but at either end you just pull them sort of sideways a bit and out of it and you can see actually it pitches pretty nice and tight and everything which is great. He's being camera shy, he's going off over there. Um, it's a lightweight tent so there are some payoffs for that and one is it's like durability so that should not be sticking out the top there you can see it's not in the others and at the other end either so that's a little bit annoying it's all adjustable you just pull those tabs to get it really tight i find that when you put a tent up um and then i'm invariably going out for it at night and have one ml courses you come back and the temperatures cool down a bit you have to tighten them up again so it's really quick they just go through this little ring here tighten it up jobs are good and that's great 
Now, you can take these poles out, you take two of them out and you can make a little bit of a tarp out of the door. Um, I'll come back to that though in a minute. You can see around this side as well, just added that guy line in there. Uh, that is what it is. Uh, that's just for bringing the door all the way back over. I've rolled it up there, but you can bring it all the way back over. Uh, more of the same there, just adjust it. So it's got a bit flappy there, so you can just crank that to sort it out. That's great. The door's open, That's uh, that kind of makes that happen. Features in here that I really like, uh, well, I don't really like this one, it's just an adjuster, that's not very exciting, but I do like this bit, right? I like the idea of it anyway. It's just an adjuster for the actual sort of inner space to outer space kind of thing. So you, wherever you want more space, you can adjust it. It's a nice idea but actually every single time I just crank it right the way open the boy working hard over there he sleeps in here on a little mat and actually there's plenty of space for him there but if I was feeling uh, like he was a bit cramped or so I could push it that way but he kind of doesn't seem to mind in the tent uh, a pocket right I get excited about pockets because some tents don't come with pockets and I find that flipping annoying because kind of part of the sort of surviving not a surviving it's a bit melodramatic isn't it but just living in a tent for a little bit organization i think is key so that makes life a lot easier for that uh that's those little tags that i said um because that, that's again it's just easy you can't really grip onto tiny little zips without those tabs very well when you've got cold fingers and everything it does have some like hanging tabs there's not a lot of space for like hanging stuff but you wouldn't really expect that from this kind of tent to be honest one thing I do really like about it is the ends, the like squared off ends. So you get a bit of head space left and right and up and down. It's not so much space at that end. It's a bit lower because that's your foot ends. They are like asymmetrical in that sense. Um, my the, one of its main competitors, I reckon, for this tent is got to be the Terranova Laser Comp. I've got one of those. At the end, it's much more narrow. So I find that when it's a little bit breezy, it just gets slapped in the face all night by the fabric and that does my head in. A tent, for me, it's got to keep the elements off you and give you a good night's sleep or not detract from having a good night's sleep. And being hit in the face all night by a bit of flappy fabric, uh, that detracts for me, sadly. Um, so I like this squared off design, that's really neat. It's actually quite spacious in here. I'm not gonna go through like widths and stuff, but uh, there's loads of space. So it's easy to have a mat in here, loads of elbow space, loads of space for your Nalgene bottles and all that kind of stuff. I find space-wise, absolute winner in here. Head height, not so much. Like I am I am six foot three, so you know, that's not completely fair for everyone, but I can't even get close to sitting up here. I'm not actually that tall in the body, it's all in my legs. Um, so I don't think many people are gonna be able to sort of sit up comfortably in here. But it's a lightweight tent, so it's not, I'm not too stressed about it, to be honest. Um, there's not much mesh in here, I'll come on to this in a minute. Just that little corner bit there. It's got this little peak, so you can have that unzipped, it does from top and bottom. And that mesh lets a bit through and that stops the rain coming in. Another little thing, thing that's failed, that's poked through and that happened, I think, on its first outing. So that's pretty annoying. Um, but, you know, lightweight, I can forgive it some of these things for sure. Little tags uh, for doing that. Sometimes you know those toggles, you like push a toggle through a loop. I find those really fiddly with cold hands. These little clips work really well. Uh, flipping warm in here. So I'm just gonna sit out again um, and switch back to the main camera. Uh, right, so what do I like about this tent? It's super light, even with the extra little bits, it's still really light. It packs flipping small as well. So that's the main things going for it. But what don't I like about the tent? condensation right the condensation in this tent is awful my laser comp right has some failings like the headspace like the lack of pockets like not coming with little tags on the zips condensation has never really been an issue with it i think probably because it's more mesh like inside so the ends are mesh the payoff is that's a bit drafty in you know when it's windy but it moves the air through and stops a lot of the condensation or it seems to anyway this thing only having a little bit of mesh is an absolute nightmare for it. It ruins the tent for me. To the point where I've been in it and it's literally been dripping in the morning because it hasn't got much head space, as I wouldn't really expect from this kind of tent, like I say, but because it hasn't got much head space, when you're trying to get dressed in the morning, you can't really help but touch the fabric and you, you do get wet from it. It's obviously just me, a single person, but I have got the dog in the porch and although he's in the porch, he is often wet and dogs kind of run quite hot. So he definitely puts some condensation in there as well. So 
I try and have the door as unzipped as possible, the outer door in the fly sheet, to try and keep that air moving through. And if there's kind of a bit of a breeze and stuff and the weather is nice, you know, it's not raining and that, and you can do that, it's okay, it's manageable. As soon as you've got to be zipped up a bit more, even when I've spent nights without the boy in there, it, it, the condensation is just grim, right? It's not just me, I've spoken to other people who've got these tents and uh, you know, one person I know carries a bivy bag with them to put over their sleeping bags. I use a down bag, so you know, that's a real problem, uh, getting wet down bags. So he puts a bivy bag on his and then you're like thinking, well, what's the point in carrying a super lightweight tent and then adding a, however much a bivy bag weighs, a few hundred grams extra, why not just have a slightly heavier tent that does a better job? That's my kind of thoughts on it. The price of this one being somewhere around 360-ish, you know, how does that compare? A Terranova Laser Comp, that I think you can pick them up for sort of under 300 these days. Uh, they've been around a long time. So that, you know, that's a better price. They don't have the condensation, but they've got other features. I think if you're less tall than me, you get less annoyed by being tapped in the face all night. So that maybe that's a better option. I've spent maybe, I don't know, 15, 16 nights in this tent. So not like loads, but enough to get a real idea of how it works. My laser comp, I spent loads more as a magpie. Got a salute a magpie. Uh, ward off bad luck or something, my mum says. Yeah, my laser comp, I've spent loads of nights in that one. It's a fraction heavier, but actually, well, it depends on the weather which I'd go for. I'm still not sure which I'd go for. Other competitors, well, there's cheaper versions of, of this style of tent, such as the uh, the Wild Country. I, think, I can't remember if it's Zephyr or Zephos. Same sort of design, a little bit heavier, but a lot cheaper. That's potentially a good option, isn't it? You can spend a lot more though. Like there's a hill, the sort of Hilleberg version of this tent, the lightweight one, which I can't remember if it's Ennen or Engen. Sorry, you have to forgive me on that one. But that's like 800 and something grams. I think it's a fraction heavier, but not by a lot. But the retail's like 650 quid, and you don't find those on sale very often because they're like uh, pretty desirable items. That's too much money for a tent for me personally. You can get a super lightweight version of this, the ultra lightweight one which has like carbon pole and lighter fabric and that comes in at I think it's like 730 grams something like that that's quite a saving isn't it around about 100 grams probably got to add those extra bits to it as well though more money again though so have a, have a look at the prices but uh, you know the condensation would just make me avoid these to be honest sadly it's a real shame isn't it now, I guess one thing to think about is like levels of discomfort different people can put up with different levels of discomfort some people might be okay kind of managing that condensation issue and they'll be happy with it for the payoff of the weight uh maybe i'm getting old i'm well i'm 39 now crikey i feel i feel it's extremely old now um but for me i've got to a point where actually probably i would have put up with this kind of tent and its failings once upon a time but these days actually a lot of the time what I do is I carry a heavier tent, so maybe I'll do a review of that because I haven't actually used it enough to review it yet. I've only used it for a couple of nights due to all the corona and lockdown and everything. But it's uh, Sierra Designs Studio uh, 2, I think it is, because it's a small two-person tent. 1.4 something kilos, but loads more space. I can sit up in it, it's a bigger porch, wider. Dog can come inside if the weather's bad as well. He can come inside this one, he curls up alongside me, but yeah, with more comfort in that one. So really, I guess the theme with these kind of things is, you know, light is right. We're always banging on about stuff like that on ML course and everything, but only to a point, right? Comfort is massively important as well. And your like levels of where they sit is entirely up to you, isn't it? Well, there you go. The Nordisk Telemark one lightweight. Uh, would I recommend it? You've got the idea. Sadly not. I'd love to recommend it. And some people will like this tent. I know they will. But for me, I just can't recommend it because I think you just get disappointed with those condensation issues personally. If you do know the perfect tent that isn't a Hilleberg and costs 650 quid, let me know because I still really want to. I love this idea, the whole concept of a lightweight one person tent that's sub one kilo. Uh, but I haven't found that perfect tent yet, sadly. So let me know if you have because I'd be, I'd be really keen to hear that. Maybe the MSR ones, who uses those? I don't know. Tell me about them because I've never used an MSR one. But yeah, I hope the video was interesting. I hope you enjoyed the view of Snowdon. Um, you know, it's a nice day out and about. Uh, I'm going climbing in a bit uh, on the slate, I think, this afternoon. Hope you're out and about doing something interesting when the weather's good like this. 
please do find us on Insta, find us on Facebook. Look, right on cue, he's come to do his cute bit to persuade you to click that like or follow button on Insta and Facebook and click the like button on here and smash the subscribe button. Look at the camera, boy, he won't look at the camera. Um, but yeah, it's massively appreciated. We're at like two, nearly 2,300, I think, uh, subscribers on YouTube. Well, happy with that. Probably all but two of them were purely for the boy. Hope you've enjoyed this video. More videos coming up very soon.